What's up everybody, it's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and Visual and we are back with another tutorial. For everybody who watched our video on Monday and who entered the giveaway and has gone to our website to cop some stuff at 50% off, thank you so much. Really, really fun doing the giveaway. We picked a winner live on our Facebook stream. The winners have been in contact. If you did enter though, we do appreciate you. Better luck next time, but the sale is still going 50% off right now on everything. So still go cop something while you can. However, let's actually talk about why we're here today. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about adding ear candy and take your track from something that's pretty good, maybe like a little bit of a sleeper, to something that is super, super interesting, something that's got a lot of depth and a lot of character. For this entire tutorial, we are going to be using our brand new Sounds of Life pack. So this is my one plug. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Just give me like 10 seconds. Uh, everything in this is going to be from Sounds of Life. If you haven't checked it out, go to our website. Over 600 sounds, 500 samples, 100 loops, uh, processed, unprocessed, crazy loops, simple loops, all kinds of really, really good stuff. So go to our website. We've got some examples to check out. Other than that, we're going to unpack some of it in this actual tutorial, and I'm going to show you guys some things that you can do to spice your tracks up and add a little bit of life to them. All right, now we're actually in the session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you what it sounded like with the drums just having a kick and snare. And then we're actually going to go over the things that I've added to kind of take it up a notch, add some extra ear candy, add some extra depth, and add some extra flavor. So right now, um, let's just go ahead and take away everything that we've added right here in the red. And then let's just take a listen. So right now, it's pretty cool, nice chords, um, kind of generic, kind of simple right now, nothing crazy. Let's go ahead and check out the chorus. The chorus feels really small because it's just basically the same thing with a couple extra synth layers. And then I swapped out the bass pad for an 808. So let's start going over some things that we have added. So the first thing I did is, you've probably seen me do this quite a bit in tutorials, is I layered over a little hit. This is a metal tin rim hit uh, from the pack. Everything is gonna be from the Sounds of Life pack, so I don't have to keep repeating that. Um, I might just tell you guys what folder this comes from. So I believe that this just comes from the Process Long Hits folder, and this is what it sounds like on its own. So I'm just layering that behind the snare, and I pitched it down three semitones so it uh, fits in the key of the song a little bit. So that's happening every other snare. And then you've probably seen me do this before as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the second snare. So on two, we have the metal rim hit. And then on four, we're gonna have the Lufa gnarly hit uh, from the same area, the long hits process area. So here's what that sounds like. and. This one was transposed down one semitone just to fit the key a little bit better. Here's it in the context of the mix. So as you can see, it's adding a little bit of sustain, a little bit of depth, and a little bit of extra body to that snare. Here's what it sounds like one more time without it. So I like adding extra long hits like that behind snares, behind kicks, behind different elements that I don't want to throw a ton of reverb on, but I wouldn't be mad if they had a little bit of extra sustain and a little bit of carryover. So rim hits are really good, big roomy snare hits are really good, big roomy snaps are really good. Anything that's going to have a little bit of extra tail and character that you can add behind that's not going to get in the way of that initial snare is going to be perfect. So we did that through the verses. I wanted to leave the verses pretty open and pretty simple, so I didn't do too, too much. Then we added this little sweep down impact right here, going into this little pre-chorus, and that is just a chair sliding, um, and then I have processed it with some extra uh, saturation and uh, compression. So here's what that sounds like, and this is pitched down six semitones, so here's what it sounds like originally. So I love that sound, I just wanted it pitched down a little bit lower to be a little bit more vibey and kind of fit in the song. 
And I like sweeps that have a little bit of a build up before they hit just because it kind of transitions nicely rather than just being, you know, a big reverbed kick drum or something like that that's just going to kind of like hit on the one. It's nice to have something to carry over just a little bit. And then we also did something kind of similar with this lock twist white noise right here. Uh, let's see what that sounds like. And this is pitched down a whole octave. Here's what that sounds like originally. So that was just taken from an actual lock that was twisted. Um, and then we threw a bunch of stuff on and then we processed it a little bit more in this mix with H delay going one fourth ping pong and then uh, just a pretty big reverb that's pretty wet. So uh, here's what it sounds like with nothing. It's nothing super crazy. It's just a nice process sound of like an everyday noise where everything doesn't feel so synthetic. Adding these like actual recorded samples and then processing them really crazy to do things that you probably could do in a synth or with a really, really processed drum machine um, just adds a little bit of extra organic life, in my opinion, instead of having everything be so synthetic. Not everything is going to hit on the exact beat. Not everything is going to be perfect. Um, so that's a really, really good way to just add a little bit of extra depth. So in the mix, this is what that sounds like when it's down an octave. with just, uh, just the transitions. Going out, we've got a couple different things. We've got this hairspray that we turned into a riser. That's from our transitions folder. And then we've also got this little quark pop that we turned into this like little bit crush riser. Sounds very John Bellion to me. That's, uh, I believe, that's either from the transitions or from the atmospheric sounds, and that sounds like this. And then I just threw on some extra reverb pretty wet so we could get a little bit of carryover. I like adding a little bit of extra reverb on things that are going to carry over. That way they can kind of fall back into the next part that's coming in rather than just going and stopping. Um, just kind of makes the downbeat a little bit heavier in my opinion. So here's what that sounds like. And I liked using that because that's a little bit different than like a standard snare fill or a snap fill or uh, like Ian Kirkpatrick percussion type fill. Adding weird little stuff like that um, to me was what made this beat start getting actually interesting instead of just being kind of a generic R&B pop beat. So we have this, uh, this is a peppercorn shaker that we turned into a big hit right here and that's going to happen on the downbeat. And that's as is, we didn't do any processing to that. Um, so that's just happening on the downbeat of every, I believe eight measures, every time it kind of repeats. We've got another door slam. This one doesn't have quite as big of a run up. And again, that one's not processed with anything, not tuned at all, um, just how it comes. So those two together is like a really, really nice kind of impact down hit. So let's hear now, now that we've at least got something bringing that beat in with that kick. That's already a million times better. The next thing I wanted to do was similar to what we did in the verses. I wanted to kind of layer up the snares with some roomier sounds. I just wanted to swap it out so the song didn't feel super repetitive and kind of overdone like we were just copy and pasting everything. So I did the same idea. I just swapped out the samples and we have this little face oil droplet hit out of the uh, long hits folder. That's transposed eight semitones down. That sounds like this. And things like this that are a little bit tonal, I really like to get in the key of the song. That's why I'm playing with some of these and, and doing the transposing a lot more than like the risers and the hits and stuff like that. It's because I like my kicks and my snares and my little clicks and stuff like that to be a bit more tonal, um, just so they fit in a little bit better. So we've got that on the back beat of the snare and then we've got this extra stick hit. So after that, I went ahead and I wanted some kind of like hi-hat element, um, but I'm, I'm kind of getting over using trap hats for the moment just because I do them so much. And no matter what you do to them, they all end up sounding pretty similar. It's normally just like fast 16ths with some triplets here and there. Um, and they're really, really fun. They work for everything. They're easy to throw in and just drive up the energy. But I wanted to do something a little different in this. So this is actually a fan button clicking on and off. Um, and then I just tempo aligned it so the hit 
is on one and then the little off hit is on the backbeat. So it sounds like this. Just threw on some auto pan to kind of give it a little bit of extra depth uh, going back and forth. I like adding width and some of my extra little percussive things like that because to me, that's going to make it actually stand out rather than just kind of sitting there right in the middle with a kick and the snare. Having a little bit of that extra depth and, um, and kind of modulation and variation really, really helps it stick out and really helps drive that groove. So now, with the sense, this is sounding a lot better already. The next thing I did is there's like this car lock that we turned into a synth hit and I just tuned that. You can see they're all tuned differently. This is down one, down three, up two, down five. I just tuned them to the key of the song and then added some extra uh, camel crusher, so some distortion and uh, compression. Added H delay, uh, which is doing a fourth ping pong and then added some extra reverb and some extra EQ to filter out some of the highs and lows. And this is what this sounds like on its own. And that's literally a car beep. So here's what this uh, sample would sound like with nothing on it. And then with the processing in the mix. So this pack has a lot of cool stuff like that where it's like you can use it as a tonal element, you can use it as a percussive element. I could have easily just used it as like one little downshift hit uh, tuned to the root note of the song. But I wanted to add it as like this cool little almost backbeat synth melody. Um, so here's what it sounds like with that. I think it adds a lot of depth. And to me, that's a sense that no matter who goes in Serum or in Anna or in Massive, they're not gonna get the exact same sound because this is actually from a sample. So doing things like this can really, really help make sure that not everybody can just be like, hey guys, today we're gonna make that synth sound from Insert Song. Um, adding some more unique elements like this is a really good way to kind of define your own sound. Uh, next thing we did was we added this extra little loop and I'll show you guys what the loop originally sounded like because I absolutely mangled this. So this was this loop originally. Great loop, it was a little fast for the song. I mean, it's it's 160, so I said it's a 155, but I didn't necessarily want that much happening, so what I did is I chopped it in half, and then I extended it. So like, I basically took the loop, made it 155, and then dragged it in half, and then dragged that time stretch that all the way out. So that's how I got this, and without the processing, it sounds like this. And I also dragged it down a whole octave. Then I processed it. I did uh, multi-pass, which is a really, really cool tool to use on uh, some of these like more percussive elements that, that might be a little bit longer. We used a preset called Micro Stopper, and then we just used Micro Shift to spread it out. So here's what it sounds like now. So that's a really, really cool sound, and it's barely there, but it just adds this nice little cool like a little bit kind of dragging backbeat that is kind of tonal, kind of percussive, kind of drags a little bit, so it adds a nice little human element. Then what we have is the snare wasn't hitting quite hard enough in this chorus, so I went ahead and I added, this is a little rim hit from the shorts hit uh, area in here. And that's a process sample basically of an ice cube hitting an ice tray. Um, and so that stacked on with a snare actually sounds insane. And to me that was a cool way to add another snare to again just add a little bit of a human element without necessarily going in and doing something you know, super, super radical. I like using these elements that are a bit more organic and then kind of making them a little bit electronic to fit in with the whole mix. Then we just added this little Febreze bottle that basically we turned into a hi-hat in the process area. That sounds like this, that's on the backbeat.
Then we did the same thing on another backbeat with a different hi-hat kind of uh, sample that we had in there called a dice shake hi-hat, um, and that's this. And then all we did for the rest was going into the second half where it repeats, we added one more little down hit, we just added this little ah. And that's just my wife going ah, and with a bunch of reverb um, also there. And then here's what that sounds like. So it just added a little bit of extra body where I didn't necessarily want the front door again, where it was gonna have a lot of low end energy coming back in because that might feel like it kind of like resets the energy. I just wanted to thicken up that peppercorn shaker just a little bit. Um, and then the last thing I did was for the second half of choruses, if they're gonna repeat, I like to add additional uh, percussive elements to kind of help drive up the energy a little bit more. So I dragged in this loop that's in 140, just time stretched that to 155. And here's what that loop sounds like by itself. So it's like a bunch of clicks and pops, it's a car blinker, it's like some cups, um, tons of different sounds went into that. And here's what it sounds like with that being in the track now as well. And that's pretty much it. All of these came from the Sounds of Life pack. We had some human elements, some electronic elements. We had a bunch of things that were super processed, not so processed. And this was a really cool way to add an organic flair and kind of a unique flair to something that could have been a bit boring, a bit generic, a bit stale. So I like adding these things just to add a little bit of flavor. And of course, you can add them straight out of the pack. You can kind of add your own processing, your own twist like we did to some of these. And uh, yeah, it's just a really, really, really good way to kind of add a little bit of extra life into your productions instead of just having really, really sale pop productions where everything is from a computer, everything is perfect, and everything is polished. So as you can see, there are a million ways that you can spice up your tracks, either by adding transitional noises or adding little ear candy, adding extra loops, kind of swapping out something like a generic hi-hat for something like a more fully percussive loop, uh, layering stuff over your trap snares, stuff that these really generic sounds that work really, really well that end up in a lot of our songs a lot of the time are great, but if you can kind of supplement them with something like a lot of the sounds in this pack or maybe our other Foley pack or any kind of other just weird sounds that you can either record yourself or find online, definitely go for it because that's a really, really good way to add a little bit of an organic twist, a little bit of your own process twist, and then get something that's a little bit new and different. Rather than just dragging in the same five like Trap Kick and Trap Snare samples that you're using all the time, go ahead and layer them, add new stuff. Don't be afraid to go wild with a processing you saw that some of these are super processed some are not processed at all so if you get this pack or if you get any pack that's kind of similar like this definitely feel free to dive in and make it your own because that's what's going to make these sounds super special and that's what's going to make your track super special so hopefully you all like this video hopefully you've got some ideas on some things to add to your next productions they can kind of take them from maybe like a 7 to a 10 and just add a little bit of your own character and your own spice into them but that's going to be it for this video we will be back soon if you guys need anything let us know hit us up at support other than that hope to see you on the website because everything is still 50 percent off right now if you like this video like comment and subscribe and let us know what you want to see next time much love everybody peace out